Good day, everyone. How are you? Are you surprised to see this face? So how are you feeling right now? If you will ask me, I am good. I am better than yesterday. So first, let me introduce to you myself. I am Mrs. Mirna Pipiamsin, a grade 10 science teacher here at Philippine School Tohan. So you might ask, what is the science teacher doing here in our subjects? This is research. No, I am not lost. Okay, because as a science teacher, I also involve myself into research. As science has an um, important role in technology, research also leads to development. So development of technology. Okay, but if you will ask me, so mom, which comes first, science or technology, technology or science? Okay, but first let us focus on research. Because I have said a while ago, research leads into the development, into development of so many aspects of our lives. One is we are enjoying now the product of technology. It could be development of our social aspect, of our emotional aspect, the behavioral aspect. Okay, so but before that, before we continue our session, let us first have a brain exercise okay so we know that our brain has neurons thousands of neurons so what is the importance of brain exercise so the brain gym increases alertness activates our neurons develops attentions patience and grief so I need to practice more of this because I need to extend I need to stretch my patience also at times okay so i do not know if you're familiar with this okay so you're going to read the words so let us try read with me red white green brown green red brown white white brown green red red white green brown brown green white red white brown red green green white brown red red brown green white so is it easy Yes, it's just easy because reading is primarily a left brain activity. This demonstrates that you are adept at using the left side of your brain. But what if you are given this? You are going to say the color of each word. Say for example, this is black. The word is black. But uh oh, we are not allowed to read that. We have to read it by the color. Say we have this is red this is black this is green blue yellow red blue yellow black red green black white oh, oh it's not white i'm sorry for that this is black this is blue this is green this is blue this is red black yellow black green black black yellow green red mm -hmm. blue yellow green oh sorry this is black black blue yellow red black green red black blue green blue red and black so if you try it you keep trying and trying and trying so when you read the color it's not that easy okay even if you are colorblind, recognizing colors is primarily a right brain activity. So as I have said a while ago, when you recognize the word, that is a left brain activity. But when you recognize the color, that is a, a right brain activity. So for many, this is, is a, a step. It suggests that you are less adept at choosing the right side of your brain. Okay? So this is, this is what we call a strip test which was invented by J. Ridley Stroop during the groundbreaking of his research in experimental psychology. The title of his research is Studies of Interference in Serial Verbal Reactions from George Peabody College. Okay, so just to give credit to the developer of this. Now, what comes into your mind when you hear the word research? So if you will notice, I have here, the, I even have here a magnifying glass. So I know that, aha, uh -huh, magnifying glass is to, you know, sometimes when you hold a magnifying glass, that makes you more of a scientist. 
okay? So it makes you more on an inventor. So what comes into your mind when you hear the word research? So maybe some of you will say, oh, when we do research, we observe, we investigate, we do the experiment. When we experiment on the dependent and independent variables, it, in it involves measurement. And when you measure, of course, you have to compute. So basically, I uh, will focus my talk here on the scientific experimental research, or maybe it could be the applied research, okay? So first, what are the characteristics of, what are the characteristics of experimental research, okay? So it contains dependent and independent variables. So it usually identifies the, co the relationship between the cause and effect in the objects of the study. It re the results of this experiment can be repeated. You can always try and try. If you have doubt, you try. No worries about that. The results are specific and quantifiable. So for this uh, talk, we are going to focus on this quantifiable. How do we quantify research? Okay. How do we come up with a specific research? How do we come up with a reliable research? Okay. So by nature, experimental research is scientific. Okay. It involves scientific method of conducting research. So you know that from science, from your science teachers, when you say scientific method, it follows a step-by-step -step procedure, okay? Then, in this study also, we are going to consider the two variables. One is independent variable, and the other one is the dependent variable in which this is manipulated that will cause effect to the dependent variable, okay? Now, once you have this dependent and uh, independent variable, that's why you will notice when you um, conduct your research and you're asked to come up with the, the research framework, usually you're asked which is the independent variable here, which is the dependent variable, okay? So, of course, this involves measurement. Yes, a while ago, maybe some of you said that, okay, experimental research, it involves measurement, yes. It involves measurement, okay? Gathering of data. It involves a statistical tool, which will cause us to come up with a reliable data collection. Okay. Now, so uh, when we speak of gathering data, so how do we gather reliable data? So actually, I ask a, a topic from your teacher, and then we have this vegetable peelings as organic fertilizer of tomato. So you will notice that I have this, in the parenthesis, the scientific name. So that usually, that is how usually go, you're going to write your title, okay? So with the scientific name, Solanum Lycopersicum is the scientific name, okay? And mind you, there are ways of writing um, scientific names, okay? So we, but we will come to that next time, okay? Now, in terms of vegetable peelings, because you will be asked by the panelists, you have to be specific. What vegetables did you use in your study? Okay, you would have to think, what are the types of vegetables you are going to consider? Even in choosing the types of vegetables, you would have to conduct research. Because in the related literature, you will be discussing there, what are the components of these vegetables? Okay, now how much of these peelings are you going to invest? No, sorry for that. Okay? It's not the, the feelings that you're going to invest, but it, how much of these vegetable peelings are you going to use in your study? Okay. So, and in that, when you, stick, so when you speak of the amount of vegetables, you would have to ask, what do I use to measure? Am I going to use, how? Oh, okay, so in my data, one spoon of this vegetable. Or is it a measuring cup? Which of this is better? Or which is actually the best device to use in the amount of vegetable peeling. So I would suggest that you use this uh, balance. This is not just an ordinary balance. This is a triple beam balance. Can you use digital balance? Yes, you can use. But if you want a specific, a reliable result, then I suggest that you use a triple beam balance. Okay? So also in conducting this, you have to test one variable at a time, okay? And 
Now, when you're going to tabulate, so I told you how much of the vegetable fillings are you going to use. So, you have here the squash, for example, and then potato. Why did I use squash and potato here? Okay, so according to Alison Hilton of the Yard and Garden, the squash is rich in phosphorus, which contributes to the development of healthy fruit. It is more on root vegetable development. Now, po potato, from the term potato, this is rich in potassium. So, this is for the root and tube uh, development. So, it protects the plant from diseases. Okay, so you might just ask, my, why of the vegetables? Anyway, this is just an example. You may have also vegetables of your preference. If ever, you will conduct the same study. Okay, now, so you're already there in the dependent variable. What about... As, okay, you're going to convert that into organic fertilizer. So, what is it in the tomato that you are going to test? Is it the fruit? Is it the diameter of the trunk of the stem? Is it the number of roots? Of course, we cannot always count the number of roots because that is deep down the ground. So, the only visible and observable as of now, because on a research, it should be time bounded. Okay, so if you, can, if you conduct research uh, later on, then it will take time for you to grow this tomato. So maybe you can measure the growth of the tomato. Okay, so when you measure the growth of tomato, okay, you don't choose um, just any device. It has to be a device that will measure really the height, okay, in terms of growth. So it could be the state measurer and a meter stick or ruler but if i suggest again i suggest it would be better if you will use this uh, tape measure okay so again when you conduct that when you do the testing so you have that that amount of squash you have the amount of potato you know you will notice in my table I just wrote the unit once, okay? This is usually, that is the common mistakes of the, the common mistake of the students. They would always write, okay, 500 grams and 500 grams. You need not to do that because that is already here on the heading. So we know that under this column, all the data here are expressed in grams, okay? So not only that, not only testing the variable, it is very important that the ex you expose your setup into an uh, into an area that is that has the same amount of sunlight okay so supposing again huh again this is your experimental setup okay so remember that you are going to treat these plants with organic fertilizer from the vegetable fillings sorry from the peelings of the vegetables okay so, you also need to have one set up that is not treated, okay? You're also going to have, you will also have the set up that is not uh, treated. And make sure that all of these are exposed with the same amount of sunlight, with the same humidity, with the same temperature, okay? So, that is one thing. That is the, uh, the beauty, or how should I say it, the, the okay, anyway, so that is the challenge that you're going to do in the in the experimental research if it is ex a scientific by nature okay so i hope I, I am clear on that so how do we record now the data so at first it is very important prior to the treatment prior to the treatment of your organic fertilizer okay you have to measure the initial height of this uh, fertilizer no i'm uh, sorry of this uh, plants okay um by the way, when we, when you were uh, want to make the tomato, make sure that this tomato, the tomato that you will use the plant comes from the same area also. Is it from Jordan? Is it from Qatar? Is it from Oman? Because that is also a factor that we have to consider. Make sure that they belong to the same uh, family. Okay? Now, so how are you going to present your data? Of course, as I have said, week zero from the start of the activity. You have here the height is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. Week 1, 1 point, that the height now is 1 point. This one is treated with more of squash than potato. Maybe this one is more of potato than squash. And this one is a combination of the two. Okay? So, 
na again first week, second week, and then third week. So with this alone, when when if I am the the panelist, I can clearly say, oh okay, this is the data. But by the way, when you write the data, please is also specify the title. What is the table all about? Of course, the panelist or who, the the research the the research teacher can easily say, oh, okay. But what about the reader? So you need to put the title of your um a table. Okay. Again, before the treatment. And then while the treatment is ongoing, after the treatment, you need to observe, you need to measure. Okay, whatever, if, if, it, if it is emotional behavior that you are studying, again, there should always be a pre-test and then the post-test. Did, did you get that? I hope you are um, getting the idea here. Okay, so this is for the vegetable peelings as organized as fertilizer of tomato. Now, what if, say the example is date palm, the phoenix dactyl, dactylifera, fiber as a component in the production of rope. So, in here, I, I would recommend because we, the date palm is accessible in Qatar. Okay, in date palm, you have to do the process of extracting the fiber. And one of the processes is by retting. Of course, we have the chemical process, we have the mechanical. So, I, I would suggest that you do the retting. So, how do we do this? The stems are immersed or submerged in water. Okay. If you want to speed up the decomposition, then you can put some um, uh, agents. Okay. Then, after that, after uh, soaking it in water, you will scrape it slowly, scrape it until the fiber surface. Okay. So, from here, from the trunk, from the stem, slowly you are getting, you are extracting the fiber. Now, remember, remember that your study is to come up with uh, a rope from the fiber that the from the fiber that you have extracted. Okay, what is it in the rope? What are you looking for in a rope? Is it the rope that easily give up? Is it a rope that can hold on tight, never will will never lose, okay, of you or of the load? So, in testing, it, no. So we have the extracting of the fiber. So you already have the you already have the fiber. You're going to make it into a rope. Before that, you would have to test. What is it that you are testing? Of course, you need to know how strong are the fibers of the palm. Can it really be used? So when we say it is strong, make sure it will not break. Can withstand without failing. Then, okay, we also have to, to test the compression strength. The maximum strength caused by a pushing force that a material can stand without crashing. Okay, so how do we test the strength of a fiber? It could be, this is just a, a very uh, simple setup wherein you have these two stands here, two pillars. And then this, you will notice, this is the rope. This is the fiber that she used. Okay. Suspended. Here is the bucket. And of course, gradually, don't forget again, huh? don't forget. You have, when you're going to add weight, gradual adding, okay. Maybe you will place 500 gram mass. By the way, these slotted weights are available in the science lab. So, just approach our laboratory technician if ever. So, gradual adding additional until it breaks up. What is its limit? What is the limit of the strength of your fiber? Or if you want, you can make use of a packet balance. So, the packet balance has calibration in newtons. So, we know that newtons is the unit used to describe force. Okay, then attached to this is the fiber you want to test. So you will have this set up. You're going to pull it and as you pull, you will see in the calibration. Okay, at which mass, at which force did the, 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 the fiber uh, give up. Okay, so I would recommend you watch this uh, YouTube channel to show you really how to test the strength of this uh, fiber. Okay, 
So please, if you're going to conduct this experiment, wear eye protection and gloves when handling the plant material. Wash your hands after handling the soaked material. And when you are testing, please be very careful. Testing fibers to breaking point, make sure the loads on the material can fall without causing injury. So I would suggest the science teacher, ako for, me for example, I am more than willing to assist you to conduct experiment in the science lab if you are going to pursue with your um, scientific experimental research. Okay, now, uh, this, is this is an example of a poster. Well, when you are done, okay, of course you have here your hypothesis. The plants require nutrients is one of your hypothesis. Okay, then or the plants do not require nutrients. Then you have the setup. You have your experimental design. This is what I'm telling you. You have the independent variable. Okay, so the actual thing that you are testing and changing across your experiment. So this is the independent variable in short, as I have said a while ago, is something manipulative. Okay, so this is the treatment which will affect the dependent variable. This is the response. What will happen to the growth of plant when, the, when this is supplied, when it is su su supplied or uh, provided with enough nutrients? So the growth of plants in height is the dependent variable. Okay, so the control group consists of plants not given fertilizer. So as I told you a while ago, if you have the different setups, so you have this setup that will be uh, fertilized with more of squash rather than potato, more on potato rather than squash, or a mixture of the two with a few with a one is to one ratio. But on the side, you also need to have a setup that is not given the treatment. That is your controlled variable. Okay, so when you do the, the graphing, so this one, this is the plant growth. A while ago, I, I presented to you the tabulated one. Okay, so it would be more appealing siguro sa readers if it is in a graph. Okay, so you have here the growth of the experimental and then of course you have here the control. Of course, then after that, you can come up with your conclusion. Okay, so I hope we are clear on that. Now, uh, I, we also have here devices or tools in the science lab. If you want to measure which of, for example, you want to test which of the mineral waters in Qatar has highest pH level. That is, of course, you would have to, to study what is this pH level? How does it affect our body system? Okay, so maybe you're going to collect Ryan, Gulf water, uh, whatever other um, um, brand of mineral water, just compare. Compare the pH level and of this mineral water, which is best suited for us, then we, get, we have here a digital pH meter. Okay? Then, for example, voltage tester, though this one is for electricity. You know, if you want, say for example, uh, you want to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy, as an example is, the pedaling of your bike, you know, when the, pand the pandemic was at its peak, most of the people here in Qatar, they, they bought a uh, bicycle. They went to, to biking, okay? And you know, uh, in do when you do the, the pedaling, you're actually exercising your muscles. But not only that, you can convert this mechanical energy into electrical energy, which can somehow, it could be maybe used, the, the energy, the electrical energy generated from that action may be stored and maybe it can supply your <clears throat> um, your your charger. Okay, the charger, it could be the, uh, the charger of your iPod, the charger of your uh, mobile phones. Okay, now uh, this is hydrometer. Hydrometer is used to measure the specific gravity of liquids. Okay, a specific gravity or the density. So we know that when oil is mixed with water, the water always settles at the bottom because water has higher density, it, higher, it has higher specific gravity. The one that has lower specific gravity will surface. Okay, 
So if you want to test the density, how does uh, the surfactants, how does detergents affect the density of water, you can make use of hydrometer. And then of course, you are already familiar with this, a graduated cylinder. This is to give us an exact measurement of um, the volume of liquid. Okay, again, these are, these are just some of the materials available in our science lab, just in case you will be needing for your scientific research. Okay, now, um, the Supreme Education Council here in Qatar is always conducting um, science fair. Okay, so let me show you, just if ever you will have interest, uh, we have here the categories and subcategories of the National Scientific Research Competition. Okay, it has different categories, computer science and communication systems. We have embedded systems, cybersecurity, networking, software engineering. Okay, for biomedicine, cellular and molecular biology, microbiology, then physics, ma mathematics, physics, and astronomy, engineering. These are the robotics. Now, those who are engaged into robots, into designing, programming a robot, maybe this would be your interest. So, when you propose a title to your research teacher, maybe you can consider all these categories. Okay? So, Earth, environmental science, then animal and plant sciences, behavioral, and so remember I told you a while ago that in research we do not only research scientific, it could also be behavioral, socioeconomic, okay? So behavioral and social sciences. So these are the categories of the National Scientific Research Congress competition here in Qatar that would be from for 2022 and 2023, okay? As, um, and I am proud to present to you some of our researches that won in Qatar, okay? So we have here the previous researchers. We have the Multicolor Ink out of Malungay Libs. We won, we are, we were the champion for the Qatar Science Congress sponsored by the Ministry of Education. We also have the next to that is the Automatic Water Sprinkler. We were also the champion. And we have here the old mobile phone as far alarm. Okay, so we were the champion in the Young Inventors Competition in 2013 in Qatar. So I hope I was able to give you ideas on how, on the what to research, how to research, and how to present your researches. Okay, so thank you everyone. Always remember that if you remove measurement from experiment, nothing will be left.